Hello students, here's a more detailed guide for your journal entry. Um, I have a couple of suggestions on how to make this easy for yourself. Uh, the first thing I would do is pull up a couple documents in the visual analysis folder. I would pull up the elements of rhetorical analysis and the assignment where it says visual analysis essay 2. Okay. And here's the elements of rhetorical analysis. As you write your outline, have this next to it. And then this will remind you to include purpose. What is the artist's purpose? What is he or she trying to do for us? And so anytime you point out something that you see, you need to explain why it's there. Okay. And you can discuss the tone or the artist's attitude towards the subject. Here's the tone words, and so it's just helpful to have this next to your outline as you write. The other thing I did was I pulled up the assignment, and then I actually copied and pasted this into a Word document. And as I typed my outline, I just deleted the different steps, so this helped me make sure that I was getting everything I needed in my outline. And I'll show you my example outline is right here. Okay. And so it has the proper MLA format, heading, title, uh, a copy of the photograph. I selected a photograph from the Prezi. Now you can't use one of those photographs. You have to find your own. But I wanted to use this so I wouldn't take away any of your options that are out there. I also have the citation information under the um, image. And I can show you how to do that rather quickly too, if you'd like. Let's see if I can find it. The original source was from Life Magazine. And there's the image. It was a article that talked about a week in the life of a homeless family. And so if you copy and paste the original source into EasyVid. It's a free citation maker. It will create the source for you. And so that's all I did. And cite it. Now I have to add some more details. This is, is this right? Website title, article title, date accessed, and continues the final step. I had to add um, the artist's name. Oops. And the sponsor, which was Life Magazine. See, I've already done this. And it has the URL. And it was published in December of 1987. Okay, once you have that, it'll create your citation. And you just copy and paste it. And that's what I did. Okay, now you'll do this again on your Works Cited page. Okay, for every source that you use. Now, here is my outline, my example outline. As I said earlier, I had the original sample just pasted here, and I kind of just went through and typed my information and deleted what was there. Typed my information and deleted. I did that all the way through. Here's my uh, claim, the thesis statement. It says the Dam family in their car by Mary Ellen Mark in the Dam Family in Their Car by Mary Ellen Mark, the Life Magazine photographer depicts the struggles of a homeless family of four in order to humanize the homeless and to urge American public and perhaps government officials to acknowledge the plight of many Americans. Okay, that's my theme. And then I start with a focal point of the image. Another thing I did that was helpful, let's see if I can find it, I blew up the picture, or the photograph I should say, and had it right next to my outline. So as I went through, I could see the details more closely. And then if I struggled with a word, I just pulled this up and said, what is she trying to do here? And so I'd have my uh, tone words and purpose verbs, very handy. And so I start with a focal point, which I believe is this, the husband and wife. And so I wrote that. The focal point are the two adults, Dean and Linda, who sit on the edge of the front seat with the door open. Now, typically, if you're talking about a subject, you would use his or her last name. But because these are all dams, 
it's okay to use their first name. So I can say Linda and I can say Dean and Chrissy and Jesse, the kids. And so that's what I did here. And I explained how Dean's arms are wrapped around his wife. He peeks over her left shoulder. I'm just telling you what I see. His arms form a triangle and seem to give Linda a small sense of secur security. This triangle matches the triangle formed by the collar of her shirt. So you have this triangle and you have this triangle. And that's uh, just my observation. But then my analysis he is here. It, it's kind of creating a stronger bond between the two. He holds her arms and his simultaneously enveloping her. Now I highlighted this in yellow so you can see I'm using the elements of design language which would be a shape in this instance, but you may also talk about color, texture, okay. Now there's more analysis in here, I didn't highlight it all, but here I highlighted this in a blue color to talk, show you that I've talked about the purpose. Why does she capture this moment in time, okay? And it's to reveal that the only value this family has is each other, okay? They must rely on each other. That's what I, believe her purpose is or one of her purposes okay and I'm still talking about the focal point it talks I describe his face I describe her face I describe um, the dark circles under her eyes and so you can read all this if you like and then I'm moving on Roman to Roman numeral three which is the next part of the image which I believe are the kids her head leans in this direction and just kind of moves all this. That points that way, that points that way to the two young children. Okay, so I would write a paragraph about the kids. And then I would just continue to walk through this image. Now, I didn't do the entire outline. I just wanted to show you what one should look like. Here you can see I still have my example from the um, visual analysis essay assignment still posted here I would just delete the parts that I've done as I do them okay now one other thing I'd like to show you real fast you notice it's double space this is the outline format but you also need your last name page number on each subsequent page and so we are going to insert his page number page number Okay, right here at the top of the page. It's going to be right here. I'm going to put my last name. Oops, I'm also in today. Four. Okay. Now, my last name is on every page. One thing, you don't want it on the first page, and so you have to get rid of that. And it really depends on what version you have. A lot of times you can find it in the print property. You have to set it up to make the page different, the first page, and just start on a different page. Right, let's see if I can find it. Print options. Let me pause this for a minute. Okay, I remember. You go to uh, page layout. Okay. Paragraph. page layout, oh my goodness, and then page setup right here, and then under layout, you say different first page, and we'll click OK, and the number will not, my last name, page one, is not on page one, it starts here, okay, then I would also, at the very last page, have my works cited page. Since I am studying the source, and I would just copy and paste my citation information here, but make sure it's formatted correctly. Okay, it uses a hanging indent, which is different. Right. See, it has everything here for some weird reason, centered. Let me go here, double space it. at first and then this should be on the left hand side this should be indented 
I don't know why it does this. It makes me crazy. You have to, sometimes you have to go here. Make sure it's here. And then bring it all over. Okay. Oh my goodness. There. Finally. Okay. Don't let it make you crazy, but it should look like this. Okay. When all is said and done. And once you have it saved, you will go to the class page. And it is a journal. You go to the journals, visual analysis, outline, create journal entry, give it a title, browse your computer, and post the entry. And you're done. Good luck.